everyone. Thank you for joining me in this video presentation. My name is Shireen Hamza and I'm an integrative physiologist and member of the Department of Physiology. This year, along with several colleagues on campus, I received the COVID-19 Remote Teaching Award and I'd like to share my experiences as an instructor in this unprecedented academic year with you. In March 2020, we were all thrown for a loop with the rapid shift to online education. I remember at the time feeling unsure of how to approach this for my courses, which are largely lecture-based. It was clear, however, that I needed to be present and remain connected to my students, many of whom were as afraid and uncertain as I was. The switch to credit non-credit also left many of my graduating students feeling devastated since this brought with it concerns about eligibility for professional programs. In fact, many students reached out to me to express a sense of despondency and wondered about the point of even continuing to engage in class. I knew I had to personally engage with students, although it meant overcoming my own introverted nature and lack of technical savvy. I started by creating a video in which I physically appeared and it served the purpose of checking in with my students. Hi everyone and welcome to Reproductive Physiology, Physiology 400 or 500 for the graduate students out there. I can tell you in that moment, I was so uncomfortable talking into a camera lens alone at home. And as an aside, this sparked my deep admiration of YouTubers that routinely post content out there for all to see. This is $1,000 Chuck. Oh my God. Oh wow. Ooh. In that first video, I openly acknowledge that we're in a strange and new situation. Many things have been taken from us in an instant, including the grades upon which we're trained to place so much value. I took a chance and simply asked students to reflect upon what their intention was in taking my course without judgment. Was it to simply fulfill a requirement, boost their GPA, or was the intention to learn something, develop their knowledge base, and apply it to improve the world around them in some capacity? In this last case, the switch to online delivery and credit makes no difference since knowledge cannot be taken away from us. I went on to explain that my intention was to provide the best quality instruction I could and deliver it to them in the best manner I could to help them continue their academic journey, COVID or not. From that moment, I noticed a significant shift in perspective in my students. They felt secure, there was a plan in place, and they would continue to learn. I noticed that students were actively engaged and all students that term completed all remaining course assessments and didn't just survive, they thrived. As I became more comfortable in front of the camera and encouraged by student feedback, I started to incorporate humor, props, pop culture references, and music into the lecture videos. Uh, what we have here is a vintage, original, puppy surprise. So this is way better than the recent reboot of this toy. So this is the original puppy surprise. Isn't she lovely? And we get one puppy and we get two puppies. It made the teaching process fun for me and the learning process engaging for students. With the news that online learning would continue in the fall 2020 term, I kept these elements for the asynchronous delivery of my courses. I discovered the magic of the YouTube platform and created a private YouTube channel for each of my courses in order to post course content in a way that increased accessibility for students. Using YouTube, students have control of when and where to watch videos and on what device, which is particularly important if students are sharing devices with family members. They can control the playback speed, stop and start as they like, and even listen to the videos as a podcast. To promote a sense of community, I created a brand for each course, so the students feel they're a part of something special. Each course featured a consistent color scheme and imagery for the PowerPoints, videos, YouTube channel, and documents. This extended to the use of distinctive intro and outro music for each lecture video. Each week, I created a video in which I appeared and introduced our topic of discussion that week. 
Hello Neem family, welcome to week 12. This week we continue our exploration of integrative control in the body with an investigation of the physiological basis of pain. This week there is no quiz, but assignment 2 will be due this Friday, February 26th. Have a great week ahead! This also created a sense of community and served as a great opportunity to highlight key dates and deadlines, as well as share any feedback. All course material was organized by weekly topics on eClass, and every time I posted something new, I used the announcements feature in eClass to connect with students in real time. I also made a point of dedicating additional time to answering emails as quickly as I could manage, so students felt my presence in their academic journey. To accommodate different personalities and learning styles, I offered to facilitate the formation of optional study groups so that the students who wished to connect with others were able to do so without imposing additional stress on students that preferred to work alone. However, I have to say that the most significant challenge during this process for me was to shift my perspective regarding assessment. I admit that I used to really value high stakes closed book exams in my courses. The students worked hard and they performed well. But in the online delivery approach, I didn't feel this was a good fit for my courses anymore. After a great deal of reflection, as well as considering what really mattered to me as an instructor, I completely changed my view of assessment in my courses. The most important point for me was that students learned principles that they could then apply academically to demonstrate comprehension within the course, and also retain knowledge and learn skills that they could apply professionally in the future. So I implemented low stakes assessments that were all open book and distributed throughout the term to help students stay on top of course material and support their progress. I created a combination of assignments and quizzes that were weighted between five and 10% each. I also let go of the idea of a final exam and implemented a final assignment for each course that students had about four to six weeks to complete. I designed the assignments such that they targeted the learning objectives and also helped students de develop skills and discover interests that could serve them well in the future. In my field, the majority of students are fixated on entering medical school, but there are so many applications of physiology training, and my assessments were designed to highlight this. For example, one assignment required the development of a Dragon's Den style pitch to investors. Another assignment was a creative project where students could choose to create a website, blog, visual artwork or podcast script on a topic related to the course. Quizzes were designed in a problem-based format featuring a mystery experimental problem or a clinical case that students would have to solve using course concepts. What surprised me was how much students enjoyed these assessments. Many students would email me directly after I posted an assignment simply to share how excited they were to work on it. For many students, these signified a much needed creative outlet. Overwhelmingly, the students related that they felt the assessments were relevant and helped them develop a lasting understanding of course concepts. Of course, as with anything, there are challenges and negative aspects to this approach. The format may be difficult to implement effectively for larger classes, from both a logistical perspective as well as in consideration of instructor workload with respect to grading. However, some of the ideas could potentially be adapted. Another challenge is that students may not keep up with video lectures and assessments in the asynchronous format, so the workload can be perceived as difficult to manage if they're not steadily engaging in the course. For example, I designed quizzes such that they could be completed within one hour, but I allowed students to complete them offline and submit them within 14 hours. These are quizzes that have been successfully completed by students within a 50-minute lecture block in person because they've studied and prepared in advance. However, if students didn't do this and instead have to watch the videos and understand the material on the quiz day, certainly a 60-minute quiz can take the entire 14 hours or more. 
As much as I could, I encouraged students to manage their time effectively, but using the YouTube analytics feature, I could see that videos were not always viewed by the entire class shortly after being released, and there was a significant increase in channel traffic on quiz days. Despite the challenges, assignments were thoughtfully prepared and responses to quizzes were insightful and demonstrated comprehension of course material. For me, there's no going back to my once beloved high stakes exams because I witnessed more meaningful learning with my revised approach. I'll likely include in-person proctored exams when appropriate, but I'll certainly integrate more low stakes learning assessments. It's been a challenging time for all of us and will likely feel the impact for years to come, but it's not all been bad. This experience has given me the opportunity to reflect upon what's truly important to me as a person and as an instructor. Part of that was letting go of old perspectives. A large part of that has been teaching with compassion. Not only does online learning impose a greater cognitive load, but there are so many more elements involved like illness, death, family responsibilities, financial strain, access to workspace, and technology. At the end of the day, if students were willing to learn but needed additional support from me, I was happy to do that, even if it meant generous flexibility on my part. In my experience, this was not abused, but respected and appreciated by students. In some cases, even inspiring them to continue with their studies despite daunting circumstances. So this is something else which stays with me and shapes my teaching approach as I move forward. With that, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to share my story with you. I hope you find it useful. It really is an honor to be a part of such an incredible university community, and I'm looking forward to engaging with you in a live Q&A session on June 23rd at 2 p.m. Until then, take care. <laughs>